Hi everyone and welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Property Investment Podcast. Thanks for joining us again. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajima again, and today we're going to discuss purchase costs, running costs, and taxes in more detail. These are all things which greatly affect your bottom line, as well as your strategy, when investing in real estate anywhere in the world, and Japan is no different in that regard. So, first and foremost, the foreign perspective. Japan, as a rule, doesn't differentiate between residents and non-residents, as many other countries do. In fact, non-residents are exempt from paying certain residential and local municipality taxes, which local investors are subject to. So, if anything, you've actually got a slight advantage if you're a non-resident. But local taxes such as this are quite low in any case, so not a huge difference there. So first, taxes. Bear in mind, the information we're covering here only applies to individual investors, meaning people who are purchasing and selling properties under their own names. If you're purchasing under a corporate structure, different taxes apply and things become a bit more complicated, so you'll want to consult with a local Japanese tax accountant. As far as individual ownership is concerned, though, the first tax to be taken into account is the purchase tax. This, like many other purchase and sale costs, varies depending on the official evaluation of the property, but usually ends up being approximately 2.5% of the purchase price, unless there's a huge disparity between the purchase price and the official government evaluation. Now, official evaluations are recalculated every few years here, based on market prices. So the further you are from the last official evaluation, the larger the disparity might be. But on average, as mentioned, approximately 2.4 to 2.6% of the purchase or sale price. The purchase tax statement normally arrives at least six months after settlement. But in some cases, depending on how busy the local tax authority is, it could take as long as two years. The next tax applicable to property investors is, of course, income tax. Now, here again, non-residents have an advantage in that Japanese tax authorities don't actually care about your non-Japanese income. We've mentioned this before. Um, it does, if you, you're only paying income tax on income generated within Japan, even if you're a resident, you are exempt from reporting any foreign income for the first five years of residency as long as that foreign income remains overseas. Once you bring it into Japan, however, you will need to report it, regardless of how long you've lived here. Japanese income is taxed quite conveniently here, with the first 385,000 Japanese yens per annum being tax-free. That's about 3,500 uh, US dollars, and that's calculated as net income. Now, in Japan, as we've mentioned again in the past, all purchase and running costs, as well as the price of the property itself, as opposed to many other countries, can be claimed as deductions and carried forward for at least three years. But you'll need an accountant to claim these deductions, so if you think that you're going to be generating a much higher income over the next few years, it's a good idea to hire an accountant from the moment this income starts accumulating because certain deductions can only be claimed if the property purchase is declared within a year of settlement. From 385,000 yens and all the way up to about 1.95 million Japanese yen, which is about 16 or 17,000 US dollars, income tax goes up to 5%. Mind you, that's only the income exceeding those first 385,000 yen. From 1.95 million and upwards, it goes up to 10% and so forth. And while it's capped quite highly at 40% plus 4.4 million yen for an income of 18 million yen and upwards, the thresholds in between are actually quite comfortable, at least for those among you who only have property investment income streams. Capital gains tax, which only applies to profit made on the sale of the property, is 20% if sold after five years of settlement, but is double that if sold before, which in effect means that Japan isn't really an environment where you can make huge profits on flipping properties unless you take some serious steps to drastically increase the property's value. Property tax, that's next, that's paid annually, and that also varies depending on the official evaluation of the property. For properties under 200 square meters in size, it tends to be quite low. 
usually works out to be anywhere between three quarters of a percent to one and a half percent of the purchase price. It can more than double, however, for properties bigger than 200 square meters. So you want to keep your eyes on that when evaluating potential deals. Lastly, there is consumption tax, which is known in other countries as goods and services tax or VAT value added tax. This is only charged on brand new goods and services. So it doesn't actually apply to secondhand properties. It does, however, apply to any service involved in the purchase or management or sale of these properties. So all prices you'll get quoted along the way from realtor, property management fees, insurance premiums, legal costs, these will all have um, goods and services consumption tax factored into them. This particular tax was raised from 5 to 8% in 2014 and is scheduled to be raised again to 10% in late 2019. That last hike was already postponed twice, though, as the government is trying to avoid getting in the way of economic recovery by raising the tax and scaring people off buying stuff before salaries have gone up. So it may be postponed again. Now, even if you're buying a brand new property straight from a developer, which does have a consumption tax element included in the price, developers tend to discount prices just after a tax hike to prevent a slump in sales. So not really something to be too concerned about when considering whether to enter the market or not. There's also gift or inheritance tax, which applies when a property is given as opposed to sold to anyone, regardless of where they live. This can be quite steep depending on the structure of ownership rights transfer. So again, something you'll want to consult with an accountant before actually going ahead with. So bearing all these taxes in mind, what are the actual purchase and running costs of a typical property investment in Japan? This is important to work out in advance because when you're reviewing any potential deal, most agencies or sellers won't actually list these for you. They quote figures like coupon yield, which in Japan means gross returns, or net yield, which isn't really net because it doesn't include purchase costs and some of the running costs. So make sure you know what exactly is included in all yield calculations you receive from listing agencies. Or better yet, have your own calculation spreadsheets prepared in advance so you can just feed in the numbers and work out returns on your own. If you work with a buyer's agent like us here at NTI, Things will be spelled out a lot clearer in the deal evaluation phase, but if you're doing this on your own, you'll want to make sure you're aware of everything before green lighting any deal. So purchase costs normally include the purchase tax, which again is about 2.5% of the purchase price on average. If you're buying from a realtor, which is usually the case here, there's another 4 to 5.4% of the purchase price on top of that for their fee. It's really 3% plus 60,000 yen plus consumption tax, but that might be a bit hard to factor in. So to be on the safe side, particularly for cheaper properties, it's best to assume 5% plus consumption tax, which currently works out to be 5.4%. This is for properties worth 2 million Japanese yen or less. So about 18,000 US dollars or less. And the actual percentage goes down from there as the property price goes up. The last purchase cost is the legal and registration cost, which includes the government's registration cost itself, the property lawyer or judicial scrivener's fee, and stamp duty. Now, here there's actually a huge variance, which greatly depends on the official evaluation of the property. It can be anywhere from 2.5% and all the way up to about 8% for legal and registration costs. So again, you won't know until you come very close to settlement day when the property lawyer submits their estimates. So to be on the safe side, you want to assume worst case 8% in the deal evaluation phase. So purchase tax about 2.5%, uh, realtor's fee worst case 5.4%, legal and registration worst case 8%, that brings it to about 16% worst case. In reality, it usually works out to be somewhere between 12 to 14 percent, more for cheaper properties, less for more expensive ones. If you're using a buyer's agent like ourselves, there's another 3 to 5 percent on top of that, actually 3.24 to 5.4 with consumption tax. So we normally assume, again, a worst case purchase cost of 20 percent when evaluating deals done through us with clients. 
and by settlement things tend to improve to the final tune of about 16 to 18 percent in total including our fees or again 12 to 14 percent without it is a good idea to use a buyer's agent if you reside overseas uh, don't have the time or language skills to handle the purchase on your own or if you simply don't have the local expertise to perform proper due diligence negotiation and you want access to the entire market including those realtors who don't want to work with foreigners which is unfortunately usually the case here could be different if you're purchasing in central tokyo osaka niseko okinawa etc where there's a large number of resident foreigners but then again these places usually don't have the best deals for the very same reason now running costs here is where it gets a bit complicated especially if you're buying a single unit in a co-owned building meaning a residential or office condo unit or say a shop in a commercial block because monthly building fees which are the biggest single monthly expense can vary hugely older buildings which require more maintenance will have a larger reserve fund pool fee component nicer or larger buildings which require more ongoing care or staff to run will have a larger management fee uh, monthly component and these two can go anywhere between 10 to about 30 35 percent of your gross monthly rental income when combined the other maybe more predictable components are your tenant management fees your property manager who is in charge of collecting the rent and handling any tenant requests chasing up debt in case they're late or short on payments etc and this works out to be four to five percent of the gross rental income in most cases depending on the city and the agency used actually 4.32 to 5.4 percent including current consumption tax rates as we've covered in previous episodes there's also insurance which is normally very cheap in japan just a few dollars per month for your typical investment property again under 200 square meters and if you're using a proxy agent like ourselves um, again in case you're not physically present in japan there's another two to three percent of the gross rental income so 2.16 to 3.24 including consumption tax rates on top of that that's about it but that is a lot to factor in so make sure you've got all of these costs worked into your deal evaluation spreadsheets we're going to have a downloadable spreadsheet template for you to use in this episode's show notes so feel free to download that or contact us directly on info at nippontradings.com that's info at n i double p o n tradings with an s o one word dot com or nippon tradings on twitter um, japan property on facebook or japan real estate on instagram all one word again that's it from us today we hope you've enjoyed this episode and we would appreciate if um, you could comment or share it with anyone you think may find it interesting and until next time happy investing <laughs>